совместно с NES Banking and Finance Society. Перед вами выступит, мы организовали выступление Брайан Рашида. Это известный международный эксперт, колумнист американского Форбса, бизнес-коуч и известный спикер в области public speaking. Собственно, сейчас передам ему слово, он за дверью, мы его позовем. Можно, наверное, поаплодировать даже. Not to be interested. It's a good one. What else? 
Forgetting the speech. Good. What else? Uh, audience don't talk. For, audience doesn't talk. <laughs> Thank you for not being one of those audiences, you guys. Audience that doesn't understand. Ignorance. Good. All good things. So, let me tell you a little bit about what's going to happen tonight. A little bit about who I am. I, I didn't understand any of the introductions. So, like, she could have been like, Brian is the worst human being ever. Uh, he knows nothing. He is a murderer. <laughs> I don't know. Like, you could have said all these bad things. So, basically, what I get to do is I get to travel all over the world. And I basically speak to, to three different pe types of people. Uh, about three different topics. So the topics that I that I speak about are, are number one, how you can make money doing what you love, and and that's that's what I do. I'm, I'm actually a speaker. I get paid to travel around to speak to help people, and so that's the first topic. The second topic I get to do is I get to work with executives from different companies. Like, how many of you guys have heard of Facebook? How many of you guys have heard of Twitter? How about LinkedIn? Cool. So I actually get to work. I work with with executives and teams in these different companies to help them tell their story in a really exciting way. In the United States, where I live in New York City, I was able to work uh, for the mayor of New York City. I was a speechwriter in his administration. So what I love is taking a bunch of information and turning it into a really great story, right? And then I also get to work with startup companies, entrepreneurs, and small businesses who are pitching investors for money, pitching, and uh, they want to learn how to, how to tell their story in a way that's exciting. How many people in this room want to start their own business? Okay, so about half of you. How many, of this, how many people in this room want to go work for an existing company or organization? So it's about the other half of you. <laughs> okay. How many of you want to do nothing? <laughs> and there's like somehow the other half of you. So I don't know. There's like three halves in this room all of a sudden. Um, when you think of public speaking, I want you to, I, for tonight, I want you to think about public speaking a little bit differently than like what I do is I come, I stand in front of a group of people, I deliver a message. But what are some other way, some other times and some other ways where public speaking is important? Project presentations. What else? Job interview. Job interview. Believe it or not, that's probably one of the most important times to be a good public speaker. We'll get into it in a second. What else? Negotiations. Negotiations. Good. And remind me to talk to you about negotiations later as well. What else? Communicating with a team. Communicating with a team. What else? Give me two more. You guys have covered most of them. What is it? Family arguments. Okay. I'm going I'm to stay out of that one. I'm going to stay out of that one. Good luck with your family. Um, what else? Talking your way through. Oh, this is good. Who's going to talk? You guys at the same time. Negotiation. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Talking your way through at some place. Like when you are not... Uh, to go yeah. you can talk your Talking your way through into a place that you're not allowed. Yeah. Great. So now we are uh, encouraging uh, crime. <laughs> Good. Yep. Selling your products. Selling your products, your ideas. <laughs> having people believe in you. Being a good networker. Making friends. Having people trust you. Telling your, your story to people that maybe want to be a part of your team. That maybe want to buy what you have. They may want to hire you. All important to do public speaking. How many people in here, if I gave you a million dollars, would start something that you believed in tomorrow? How many people have an idea today of something you could do tomorrow if I handed you a million dollar check right now? Raise your hand. How many people do not have an idea? It's okay if you don't have an idea. Alright, so it's interesting. So about half of you have an idea, half of you don't. What's cool about public speaking, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do an exercise where I'm going to actually call up a volunteer who is uh, this man. He didn't even know it yet, but he's volunteered himself. Thank you. Because you're afraid of public speaking. <laughs> he's like, damn. Um, is public speaking isn't just eye contact and posture and tone. It's also telling a great story. 
It's also making people so excited about what you're saying that they want you to be a part of the team, right? So when you think about public speaking, think broadly about public speaking. So what we're going to do now is, because I think I have 45 minutes with you to talk, and then we're doing Q&A. So for the next 10 minutes, here's what I want you to all do. I want you to imagine, and take out whatever you're writing on, a piece of paper, your phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever. I want you to imagine for a moment that I say to you, you have two minutes to come up here and present an idea to me, and if I like your idea, I'll give you a million dollars. Honestly, God, you're smart. I knew, I knew someone in this audience was going to say, like, dude, are you really going to give me a million dollars? We'll talk about it. No, I'm not going to give you a million dollars. Jeez. I've, I've spent so much money on Russian food this week, I have no more money here. I had to, like, find this tie in the, in the trash. Um, all right, so what I want you to do for the next ten minutes is I want you to write me a story about what you want to do, who you are, and why I should give you a million dollars. Okay? Before we start that exercise, and then this gentleman, tell me your name. Daniel. Daniel? And Daniel's going to come up here, and Daniel's going to give us his speech. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Sorry, but you have to speak to all these people. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically just judge him. Like, we're going to say, Daniel... This totally sucked. This was awesome. We're going to like judge you, but it's okay because we love you. <laughs> and then we're going to go through and we're going to, as a group, dissect what Daniel does and we're going to see what was good, what was bad, and how you can apply it to any public speaking thing that you have to do in the future. Sound good? Makes sense? Does everyone understand what we're doing? If you don't, if you, if you don't understand, please ask because this is a very important exercise. You are going to present me with a two-minute pitch about why, what you want to do, why you want to do it, and why I should give you money. Okay? Anyone have any questions before we start? No one has any questions. Yes, sir? Is everyone really going to have the two minutes? No. Daniel's going to have the two minutes. And then we're going to judge him. And the rest of you, well, you'll, you'll be analyzing your script as we go through his. No, I, believe it or not, we don't have uh, time for everyone to come up, unfortunately. It'd be like 300 minute presentation. Yeah. Alright, so 10 minutes, guys, I would ask that you do this in silence, because some people get distracted by noise, and it's, I want everyone to be focused. 10 minutes, go. If you have questions, let me know. change it just a bit. I'm going to change it just a bit because I thought about something. That people... Imagine that you already have an idea or a service or a business or a product or anything and you're actually trying to get me to use it or to buy it. Okay? So let's change it a bit because I think it'll be more useful for you. You have a product, you have a service, you have an idea, you need to tell me what it is and you need to convince me to use it, to buy it, uh, to use it or to buy it.
right right now. Just this is going to be for later. not yet have a sheet. Alright, so everyone should have a sheet. At this point, uh, try to wrap up whatever you're writing in the next minute and take just one minute and quickly read through the prep checklist and I'll explain what it is in a second. But just quickly give a, a read through to what are the, the, the points that we have here on the sheet. seconds and we'll study. All right, so really quickly guys, how how um how was that experience? Did everyone get something did anyone not get something written down? All right, great. What uh, what was going on when you were writing stuff down? What were you thinking about? What were you worried about? What were you what was feeling good? So is my product important? Will people buy it? Why why will people pay attention to it? Good. What else? Anything else you want to share now? What is actually a problem if I want somebody wants to solve? What is a problem I'm trying to solve? Very good, very important. What else? Why it's special? What? Why it's special? Good. What's different about it? Yep. What's the name of the product? What's the name of the product? The name. What's the point? Right. Good. All right. So Daniel, come on up. Everyone, let's give Daniel a round of applause. So before before Daniel starts, thank you for coming up and volunteering. Um, what I want you all to be doing is when Daniel is presenting his public speech, his public presentation, right? I want you to be thinking about if you would buy it, if you would use it, why and why not. I want you to think about what is he doing well and what is he not doing well from a public presentation perspective, all right? And then we're going to dissect what he did, and that's where we're going to basically look at your own, uh, what you wrote down as well. So Daniel, you have two minutes to go. I'd ask that everyone be silent, please, while he's talking. And all right, so tell us, Daniel, 
Who are you? What are you selling? And why should we buy it? I know what I do. Uh, I won uh, the nation of Olympiad in economics, and now I'm the head of the of one of the largest finance student clubs in Russia. I would like, Brian, I would like to sell you the right to present yourself in front of these uh, bright students uh, who, uh, in the future, will become the CEOs of the largest uh, organizations, uh, and thus uh, create a flow, a huge flow of revenue to your firm. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no. Okay, all right, we'll give it So we're obviously doing more than one tonight, so I hope someone else is ready. Um, okay, well, uh, it was short. <laughs> Can you just say it one more time? I was sort of anticipating it to be longer. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> All right. So go ahead. Start again. I just want to write down everything you just said. Okay. Start again. Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, so. I know what I do, and I know how to bring uh, what I want to the point uh, uh, where I want to be. Uh, so I'm uh, I've won the National Olympiad in Economics, and I'm currently the head of Nest Bank and Finance Society, which proves my uh, my uh, problem-solving abilities and the teamwork sk skills, which make me. Uh, a, uh, a good uh, candidate to uh, promote uh, what you wish. So I would like to sell you the right to present uh, yourself in front of the brightest students in Russia, which will very soon become the uh, CEOs of the largest organizations uh, and thus uh, be your clients, which uh, who will bring you huge flows of revenue. That was a little longer. <laughs> there were a few things that you didn't say the first time. Okay, hold on. All right, good. Cool. Uh, let's give them a round of applause. So, let's... let's. You are allowed to ask questions. Absolutely. All right, so let's, let's do it this way. What did, what was what you didn't what didn't you what do you think could have been what was good about Daniel's presentation what was good about it first short huh clear interesting that's it short and clear it was very targeted targeted yeah very targeted like it couldn't have been more targeted straightforward what else. He looked like a nice person, okay? <laughs> These things actually do matter. Congratulations. You're a nice person. He said we're going to become CEOs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He did, and I, I believe it. I can tell there's a lot of smart people here. What else did you like? It's a good idea. It's a good idea. Thank you. <laughs> Bringing me is a good idea. Thank you. Uh, what else? What else do we like? There are, there are a lot of good things there. Think, think more. Not the usual structure. It was, a, it was a unique presentation. Good. What else? Uh, it's kind of really nice, um, interesting that uh, he offered you quite special product. Uh, that is uh, the, really the product of the 21st century. So he offered you not like something to buy, but the opportunity. So Good. Kind of trade the information. This is interesting. Very good perception. What else? I saw another hand in the back. Oh no, it was your hand. Um, yes, I put my soap, so. You forgot. Never mind. Okay. Uh, okay, so, the good, very good input. What could have been better about his presentation? Looking at the audience. Looking at the audience, okay. He was looking at me. <laughs> Second speech, but I still didn't get it. 
So his, his sale, his, the thing he was offering wasn't clear. Good? Yes? Yeah, I, I think we need a more compelling story, like examples of uh, people becoming CEOs of the company. So <laughs> it, it sounds more persuasive because it, it actually can probably be a good deal if you believe that people from, from this university become CEOs. Very excellent point. What else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Good. And yeah, you didn't say your name. Your name is very important. Good. What else? There is no interaction. There's no what? Interaction. No interaction. Good. Good. What else? Maybe he should have better. He is a commodity with another one. Compared to what else is being offered on the market right now? Good. Or really, I don't know if it's good or bad, but he showed his credibility, telling that he's a good problem solver and head of the finance and banking society. Good. I don't know if it's good or bad. It's good. It's a good good observation. <laughs> I love it now when I'm like, what was bad? Everyone's hand is up. Because we're horrible here. <laughs> well, uh, throughout this short speech, he managed to, to do a lot of policies with this afternoon, which actually distracts the audience. And to... <coughs> good. It's normal, normal uh, sort of nervousness. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure, but it's probably not so good because uh, the, the, uh, no action items were presented at the end. Like, so the, what was the offer? I mean, right. it was clear, but not interesting. Sort of what happens next kind of thing, right? Yeah. Good, good. Somebody else have a hand up? And then we'll, yep. He didn't say the price. <laughs> it's true. I don't know, how, I don't know how, how much he wants me here. All right, so awesome observations. I think in general, um, it was a it was a pretty decent uh, start. I mean, this is hard. I mean, it's, it's it's brave that he came up here. So now, everyone, take out the checklist. Now, what I want what I want to tell you about this checklist is this. This checklist I want you to keep forever because you can literally use it for any public. It doesn't matter if you're going to talk in front of an audience of ten thousand people, or if you're going to talk in front of one person. You can always use this as your guide. This is literally the same checklist that I walk people through in the best companies in the world, the best entrepreneurs in the world, the best CEOs in the world. We follow this checkword, this framework, and it always works. Always. So if you follow this framework, you'll always give a good presentation. All right? So let's, let's work through Daniel's speech looking through the, 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 the framework. The first one is sort of like an introduction, right? I'm present, authentic, and ready to influence. That's something more that you have to do on your own before. So let me give you an example of what I do. How many people in here watch TED Talks? Heard of TED Talks? I actually was lucky enough to give a TED Talk uh, a couple of years ago, and I was really, really nervous because it was by far like the biggest high. Like every speaker wants to give a TED Talk, right? It's like winning the gold medal for you know as an athlete. I was really, really nervous, and so what I realized was that in order for me to give a good speech, the, my, my preparation started way before I actually stood on the stage. So now, every time before I give any sort of public presentation, I do a few things, right? Number one, I watch stand-up comedians, and these are really fun like public speaking hacks that you, may, you might never have heard before. Number one, I watch stand-up comedians. Why? Because if you ever watch, a, how many people watch stand-up comedy? They are the best public speakers in the planet. Because their job is to literally not get booed off the stage. Like, they are, their whole hour is supposed to make you laugh. That's hard. So, a good, a good, uh, good stand-up comedian is an awesome public speaker. I watch them, I learn from them. The second thing that I do is... I think about one or two stories that I know so well that even if I totally go blank, so that was someone's fear earlier, going blank, I know I can rely, rely on these two stories, right? No matter what happens. And number three, and this is kind of weird, but it works for me, and you should think about what works for you. I go into the bathroom right before this guy's like, dude, if you're going to tell us about your like pooping, we don't want to hear it. <laughs> I go into the bathroom, and I look at myself in the mirror, and I say, go change one person's life on that stage. 
And if I can change one person's life in any way, then that helps me get into a state of mind that I'm totally ready. I'm totally ready. So before you have any sort of public speaking presentation, do whatever you need to do. Maybe it's work out. Maybe it's go for a run. Maybe it's take a hot shower. Maybe it's not taking a shower for a week. I don't know. Do whatever it is that you need to do. So obviously, you know, I just called you up here. So, but take a breath, meditate, do your whatever, whatever you want to do, right? Get present. Number two, I've done my homework and I know my audience's pain points and struggles. Did Daniel do this? Not really. How would it have looked if Daniel did this step? How would he have started it? First of all, I agree with you. I always say, I mean, assume that I know your name, but always say, hey, I'm Daniel. It's good to see you. I just wanted to introduce myself. I am the b -b 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 president of the b -b -b -b, right? And, and then you transition into this, the second point. This is so important. If you don't know the pain point and the struggle of the person you're talking to, you've lost. And if you know the pain point and the struggle of the person you're talking to, you've won and you will always win. So in Daniel's case, what would that have sounded like for me? Give me some examples of something he could have said to show me that he understood me. Yes, sir? I know that it's really hard to get... Um, uh, yes, do it. Get, 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 I know it's really hard nowadays to get really... Uh, a valuable audience that you can build long, long lasting relationships with. Great, great start. Yep. That was it? Practically the same, but it sounds like uh, I know the way how can you get the long term success in revenue. Okay, so that's a different, that's different, right? So his is like, you know, getting speaking jobs well, is hard. It's not the revenue. And you're, no, but it, it could be. So you're saying, um, I know how to make you more money. Right? So there are two different problems. The first problem is having a valuable audience. That's what you're saying. The second problem is, I know it's hard to make money as a speaker, and it is hard to make money as a speaker. So either of those things would have caught my attention. What else could he have said? One more thing. Those are both good. What else could he have said? Say something about you being in Russia. Like what? Brilliant. So you've touched on my time, you've touched on my money, you've touched on my network. Do you want to change like hundred people's lives? Ooh, you guys are good, man. You guys are good. You've touched on my heart. All are very important. So if you put those things together, boom. So hey, Brian, my name's Daniel, and I just, I just want to thank, thank you for coming here. I know it's hard. It's a long flight. Listen. Here's what I know about the speaking industry, because I'm because I am. Who said the thing about credibility? Credibility, credibility. This is where he says credibility. I'm the president of the banking. The new the 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 banking. I'm the president. I'm the president. Damn it! Like, well, leave me alone. All right. I'm the president of the banking thing, and uh, and here's what I know about the speaking industry, because I work with a lot of speakers. Number one, it takes a lot of energy to be on the road all the time. And number two, it's hard to make money. And number three, it's even when you do make money, the audience that you get maybe isn't that great. And number four, I know that you need to eat. I know that you need to, to be able to pay your rent to be able to keep doing what you want to do, which is touch hundreds of people's or thousands of people's or millions of people's lives. What if I told you that I could do that for you? Right? You guys see that? I'm like, tell me more. And I love you. Right? That's number two. Does everyone see that? Yes? Raise your hand if you see that. Cool. Number three. I can I, I show my audience that I am one of them and that I understand their struggle. This again is work well, I'm gonna ask you I want this to be interactive. So you guys tell me how he, Daniel, student in Russia, understands me, professional speaker in America. How can, because we have to connect, otherwise I don't trust you. If we can't connect, I don't trust. How can Daniel connect to me to show me that he understands my struggle? Uh, maybe it was, how can I do kind of business, kind of making money? <coughs> tell, tell me what it is. I mean, uh, I was have to communicate with a bunch of people, different people, and um, crusade them to do something, 
and give them some ideas, some points, and make you feel comfortable. Give me an actual sentence. So let's continue the speech. Hey, I'm Daniel. Blah, blah, blah. I know that it's hard to bum 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 bum. Uh, yes, and also uh, I know how hard it is to make new ideas to uh, to get to people. Uh, to be honest with you, to myself. Good. I have gone through it myself. Is always a great line. I know how hard it is. I've gone through it myself. Very good. What else? You know, I also want to be a public speaker. Ah, interesting. <laughs> Why does that? Why do I care about that? Why do because I, as the person he's going to hire, care about that? It's a pretty strong bind between the two of you. And you want to change people's life? Yeah, just good, 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 good. You know, it's interesting because uh, this is a, like a little technique that a lot of people don't know. A lot of people are afraid of asking someone for a favor, right? A lot of people are afraid of that. But what's interesting is if I said, "Hey, uh, Daniel." I need a favor. I need you to connect me to the head of the school to see if I can do a speaking opportunity. If Daniel says yes to me, and Daniel does me a favor, what happens to our relationship? It gets, I owe him, right? That's what you think. That's what everyone thinks. But the truth is, now Daniel feels even more connected to me. So that's what everyone thinks. Everyone thinks now I owe him. But when Daniel does me a favor, and this is an important point, think about this. When someone does something for you, what are they saying? I believe in you. I want you to succeed. I have attached my name to your success. So if someone does you a favor, that's a good that's a good that's a good networking. That's a good connection, right? Just think about that. So anyway. I know how hard it is. I know that I want to change the world too. I want to be a speaker too. What else? Anything else? Before we move to the next one. Yeah. Oh, you can just tell a story that something like uh, I feel a community myself and I know how uh, how many people in the community are like passive ones. So it's always the problem to find the right people in the journey. Like, how is that connected to my struggle? Well, uh, I believe that as you said, you have a uh, problem of building the available audience and uh, although he has no direct uh, experience uh, earning money as a speaker, yeah. he has a similar problem uh, gathering people together and uh, making both together. Good, good. Let's go to the next point. I know where my audience wants to go next. Did Daniel do this for me? Did Daniel take me to where I want to go next? A little bit, right? A little bit. He said, I want to, I know, I want to make you more money. Okay, and maybe that's where I want to go next. But remember all the things that we said? I want to make sure that your time is well spent. I want to make sure that you're touching more people. I want to make sure. Question for you guys. How do you know what your audience wants? It's a very important question. How do you know what your audience wants? How do you know what their pains are, their struggles are, their frustrations are? How do you know? one of them. Huh? Brilliant! You're a genius. You talk to them. Like humans. What else? You can refer to four men. How? Uh, for example, we are like all students on the same college. Yep. And you as a speaker could have for example you could have learned the name of the society that they represent because they're the nice group. That would, good. Yeah, that would, be, would have been a good preparation for the Great. And I was kind of messing with him. I actually have prepared. I've asked several questions about the students. But good, good observation. I'm glad you're paying attention. Um, what else? These are both excellent. What happens if I can't talk to all of you? What happens if I can't talk to all 150 students in the audience? Who do I talk to? The leader. What if I can't get a hold of the leader? Who do I talk to? My, myself. <laughs> The rule? The rule? No, it's okay. It's okay. Your, your guys' English is like really actually very good, so don't feel bad. I just didn't understand the word. Is that world? Oh, the world. The world. Ah, okay. The world. That's a little general. But there's always one. Yeah. Uh, just random person out of the audience. A random person out of the audience. There's always someone that brings you somewhere, right? So what if you're preparing for a job? What is your preparation? How do you know what you're... If you're preparing for a job, who is your audience? Employer. Exactly. Your employer. 
How do you prepare for the job interview with an employer? Trying to get to know the company better. Get to know the company better. Learning about what? About him or her. Learning about the company background. Learning about the problems. Learning about the things. Okay? Does so everyone see that? So basically, what we have done so far is Daniel has introduced himself. Daniel has shown that he understands my pain points. Daniel has shown that he knows where I want to go. Now, what's the next one? The next one is the most important one, right? And that's a solution. And then I want to go, so, solution, and then go to the back, the back of your worksheet. So basically, five, six, and seven, right, are all going to be lumped into the same thing. So how do you do solution? You do a solution, because what Daniel said was, I can help you. And what the gentleman in the back correctly pointed out was, but how? You haven't really told us any of the studies. You haven't really told us any of the success stories. You haven't really given us any action items as to what's going to happen next. So how are we feeling right now? Daniel's connected to me. I'm connected to him. He understands me. He understands where I want to go. Now it's, now it's really time for the sale, right? This is the most important point. So how could Daniel have done this? How could he show me the solution, put it into a framework, and show case studies and examples. Who wants to try this? Actually, why don't you try it? Why don't you give it a shot? What would the solution be? How could you how could you do the solution with a framework? Does everyone understand what a framework is? It's sort of like a plan, right? And a case study. How would you do it? Take me through it. I know that you want more money, I know that you want more time, I know that you want to reach more people. Well, I have a solution for you. What is it? So, so and then I start... Just stand, stand up and try it. Give me the solution now. Give me what you're offering me. Give me what, give me what you're selling me now. Come on up. Hey, Daniel! Okay, cool. So what, so what are you proposing? So I would like to sell you the right to uh, to present yourself in front of this audience. Stop. I would like to sell you the right to present yourself in front of this audience. Who understands what that means? Okay, you guys like half of the room understand. Okay. All right. I'm going to open my mind up. What does it mean? Uh, Paul. Okay. So. He wants, he wants you to pay him money so you could talk in front of us. Stop. He wants me to pay him money yeah. so I can talk in front of you. Is that what you want? Yeah. No. No. no I don't know. <laughs> this is my point. I have no idea what you want. You have no idea what he wants. Who else wants to say what he wants? This is going to be fun. Young lady with the yellow. You have your hand up? No. Who had their hand up in the back? Okay, go ahead. Is that what you mean? Is that what you were saying? What he just said. Yes. But so, so here's what's unclear. Are you selling me something? Like, are you? Okay. So, let's think about how Daniel can give us a solution. Because this isn't clear. Only about a quarter of the room raised their hand, and even the quarter that raised their hand don't really know what you're saying. So, what is a better way that he could say what he wants? I can bring the best people of Moscow together to, to come together and listen to you. But, but what, are you getting out of this? what am I gaining by having these people here? But he's not paying. Are you paying me? There we go. We're getting there. So keep going. Tease that out. He's not paying me money. He's bringing people together so that what? You said it. You said it sort of. So how can he say it? Say it. You're, you're right there. You're right there. He gives you popularity. The famous. He makes me famous. <laughs> He's close. Say it. Maybe I'm trying to give you this opportunity so you present yourself and establish the long-term relationship with the audience you're going to present 
take it one level higher. You're there. You're there. You're there. You're there. You're there. Who else has an idea? Yeah. Good. Good. All right. So how does this sound? Did you have your hand up? You want to say something? Yeah. Go ahead. So uh, I have a group of bad memories when they escape. So Daniel. Yeah. So Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Brian. Brian. Okay. I'm able to. Uh, to I'm able to organize. Uh, organize a great. Uh, I'm going to ask a great talk where a future sale will come. And you know what future sales, what, what they want? They want to speak greatly. They, they, they need to be able to sell your stuff, not sell them, to, to deliver their ideas to, to investors and to other people. And you know what? In the long term, they will be interested in you and they will remember you in five years. Good. Good. Does everyone hear that? All right, let's, let's recount what he just said. He said, Brian, here's what I want to do for you. I want to bring together the best students at our school. I want to bring together the smartest students who are all going to be CEOs. And I want to give you early access to them before they become CEOs. So that by the time they become CEOs, and they all will need to do public speaking, they will all need to give speeches, they'll remember you. Please remember me. <laughs> They'll hire you, and they'll bring you into their organizations. That is an excellent start, but now we need to keep going, which is, what is the framework, and how, does, how do I believe in it? So the framework could be something as stated. Don't go anywhere. The framework could be something as simple as, how about if you give me one month to organize two or three events for you, and I'll show you the kind of people that I can bring in. Past graduates, right? This is what you were saying about the case studies. Have gone on to be, for example, CEOs at company A, company B, company C. Right now, we have interns or people that are working jobs in company A, company B, company C. Why am I doing this? What's the point? Case studies. Case studies. Credibility. I can believe him. I can trust him. Right? Does that make sense? And then, take my audience on a journey. This is less important for this because, you know, if he wanted to take me on a journey, he could say something like, imagine if you come to Moscow once every six months and you could meet new students every six months in Moscow, in Skogluo, all over the, the country of Russia, and it would, be, it would be amazing for your future. Something like that. The, the last thing that I think is really important, number step number nine, and this is what the gentleman in the back was referring to at the, at the beginning. I know the exact, you can sit, it's okay, thank you. I know the exact next step that I want my audience to take. All that means is I tell them what I want next, right? So what is the exact next step that he might use right now? Tell them more. No, exact next step. So check your schedule and call me tomorrow. Good. At what time? At 7. At 7 a.m.? No. <laughs> After the meeting. You guys are very ambitious. A lot of CEOs. 7 a.m. Call me tomorrow at, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. What else? That's a good one. What else could you have said? Exact next step that he wants me to take. What could it be? Exact next step he wants me to take. He wants me to take. Yes. Think about it. You know, think about it, and uh, you keep it uh, automatically. You know, uh, predict that you will accept it and say, think about you know how much you could pay for this or something like this. Okay. Um, okay. Good. Get even more precise. Here's here's what he could say. Brian, it's going to be $5,000. We can work together for six months. I need your answer in the next 72 hours. So let me know by Thursday at 9 a.m. if this is something you're interested in because I have other speakers that I'm going to approach if you're not. Okay? Close it. Right? Don't dance. 
Don't sing. Just close it. Listen, here's the deal. Because people value their time. Right? That's the exact next step. It could be like, think about if you want to change the world together. You already took me on that journey. I already know what you can do for me. Here's what I'm prepared to offer you. I have 72, you have 72 hours to accept my offer. It's $5,000. And don't be like, or like whatever you want to pay me. Just say it. Right? And then see what happens. All right? And then the final point is have a clear takeaway for the audience. In, in this case, the takeaway is very clear. I want to offer you, I want, he's basically saying like, I want to be your agent. I want to be your agent. I want to bring you great students. I want to give you people to act, I want to give you access to people you wouldn't otherwise have access to. Is it something you're interested in? Does that make sense? I know that it's a lot of material. And I know that we went fast, but I do want to leave time for questions. So just sort of to summarize what we just did with Daniel. It's important. The most, if you don't take anything else from this uh, conversation, the most important thing is to understand what's hard in my life and offer me a solution to that. That is sales 101, sales 201, sales 301, sales 401. It doesn't have to be so complicated. We spend a lot of time creating products and services and ideas that we think people will want, but we've never really talked to them. And we don't know if it's what they want. So ask someone a question. What <coughs> is frustrating to you about your job or your business or your book? If you have a solution to that, then offer it to them. All right? So, Daniel, good job. I want to take any any questions. I do want to mention something about negotiations uh, that's been very helpful for students that I've talked to in many parts of the world. Um, but I want to take questions first. Any about anything about networking, about public speaking, about life. Yes. How do you beat uh, stage fright? How do you beat stage fright? Good question. There's a couple things I would say to that. The first thing is you don't. It's it's almost impossible to beat it. But what you can do are little tricks. So, number one, have a couple of what I call signature stories that you know so well that no matter what happens, you are going to be okay. Because if you get nervous, you can just say, okay, that one story, that one story, and then just start telling that story. It, it's, it would be good if that one story is connected to whatever it is that you're talking about, right? But, you know, the other thing that I would say is, if you're horrified of public speaking, like if you hate it, then I have found that humor works really well. I was working one time with the CEO of a company, a very well-known company, and she stood up in front of a crowd of a couple of thousand people, and she froze. Like she stood up there and she said, hello, my name is, and today I want to talk to you about technology in Silicon Valley. thousand people. Silent. And I'm sitting in the front row and I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> I'm fired, you know? <laughs> I'm done. I better find a new client. And she stays silent for like 35 seconds. Which is a long time. Right? And finally, you know what she says? She says, Ugh, forgive me, I'm really, really nervous. And you know what people started doing? Clapping. And she was like, you could just see, she was like, Whew. and right away she remembered. So if you hate public speaking, chances are 90% of the people in, in the audience also hate public speaking. <laughs> and if you make a joke about it, like, oh my God, I hate this, I hate being up here. Like, I hate it. How many people here hate public speaking? And they're like, yeah, and now all of a sudden, you guys are like connected. So, number one, I would say, have a signature story. Number two, if you freak out and if you totally bomb, make a joke about it. And number three, what I think is really important for mentality is you have to know that like, so I look out here, there's like 150 of you, right? And, and, and. I look at you and I think to myself, like, how cool is it that 150 people are here on, uh, what day is it? Monday night, uh, at 8 o'clock at night, wanting to learn. 
I, don't, I can almost guarantee you that not one person in this audience came and said, Yo, I hope this dude sucks. <laughs> like, I hope this dude blows. I hope he's awful. Like, please make him awful. Like, you did. So if you, if you put yourself into that mentality, like, everyone in this audience is kind of hoping that you're good. It really helps you calm down. Because all, all my job is is to teach you one thing. And hopefully I've taught you, all of you, at least one thing tonight. And if I've done that, then it's cool. So whenever you speak, you know, people often think, when I speak, I have to get a standing ovation, or I have to make the crowd laugh, or I have to... All you really have to do is teach them one new thing, and you've done a good job. So take the pressure off of yourself. That's my best answer for getting over stage fright. Sort of a mental, mental, uh, mental adjustment. Cool? Other questions? Yes, sir? Uh, how to come up with the uh, stories? Ah, good. How to come up with stories. <laughs> In what way? Like, uh, if you don't have a life full of, I don't know, adventures and so uh, all, all sorts of <laughs> If you don't have a life full of adventures, how do you come up with stories? There's, there's two things I would say. Make them up. No, I'm kidding. Um, lie? No. Um, just kidding. Um, two things. Number one, make some stories. Like, go out there and live a little bit. Do some things. No, I'm not, I'm not even joking. Like, there was a point in my life where I'm like, but I have no stories to tell. And then I'm like, well, that's your own fault, right? Go make some stories. Right? So number one, make some stories. I'll give you an idea about how to do that in a second. Number two, use other people's stories. So people that you respect. People that you believe in. Your role models. Right? I didn't stand up in front of 2,000 people and not have a word to say. That wasn't my story. Somebody else did. Right? But I just told that story, and it was very powerful for all of you. You should have seen it. You're like, yeah. yeah. I love it when that moment where I look at you, and you're like, yeah, that was, that, was, that was good. Right? So think about people that you respect, that you've worked with, that you admire, and think about stories. The best way to come up with stories, for me, and again, uh, I, I like to have this, this phrase that says, advice is autobiography. Everything that I'm telling you is stuff that works for me. You actually shouldn't believe anything that I say. None of you should believe any, not one word that I say. You should take what I say, apply it to life, your life in whatever way that you want, and test it out and see if it works for you. What, what I have on this sheet works for me, and it's worked for a lot of people that I've worked with, but if it doesn't work for you, don't follow it. Make your own checklist, right? So if you have no stories, here's what I would say. Every single day, do something that is outside of your comfort zone. In other words, do something that scares the hell out of you. Let me give you a few examples. I'm pretty shameless. Like, I have no shame. I'll do pretty much anything. Which is kind of like, but it, it's led to some of the best stories in my life. So, I will, uh, I, will, <laughs> I will ask random people at a restaurant that I don't know, that I've never seen in my life, if I can have a bite of their food. So I was in New York City a month ago, and I was out with friends, and they, they know that every day I do something that scares me. Like, okay, Brian, what did you do today that scares you? And I'm like, well, actually, I haven't done anything yet. They're like, well, what are you going to do? So I walked up to this girl. So I'm like over here. It's a Thai restaurant in Manhattan. And I'm eating, and there's like, two girls having dinner together. They're like friends, right? They're obviously friends. They're talking a million miles an hour. And I walk up to the girl, and I was like, hey. And she's like, you know, she's like, what, like, what do you want, you know? And I'm like, can I have a sip of your tea? <laughs> you know what she said? She's like, yeah, sure. And I, had, I drank her tea. And the whole table is like, Yo, you're crazy. <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? Um, I will pretend like I'm homeless. Uh, so I'll sit down uh, in Manhattan. And I'll sit on the, on, the, on the ground. And I'll eat dinner. And I'll have like a cup of, uh, for change in front of me. And I'll be wearing like this. I'll be like this. I'll be like sitting here, like, eating, and then I'll have like a cup out there. And no one gives me money, like ever, you know? But um, it's just sort of that. And then I'll do things like that every day. I'll do something every day. And for, uh, for whatever reason, that leads to a lot of stories. Uh, at one point, I actually stood at the bottom of an escalator, right? So there's a mall, at the mall, in the malls, you know, they have the escalators. I stood at the bottom of the escalator, and I asked 
every girl that came down, if I could ha have her phone number. I was like, can I have her phone number? And like, no one gave me their phone number. <laughs> but just the point is this. Start to see your life as an experiment. Every day, oh, so what I try to do is once a week, I do, or no, every week, I try to do an experiment every day. So my last, my latest experiment is I negotiate everything. So like I went into Starbucks and like bought a coffee and the guy's like three dollars and I'm like, can I give you one? And he's like, no, it's three dollars. And I'm like, and I give him three dollars. Get used to hearing no. Get used to hearing no and I promise you that your life becomes more interesting and all of a sudden you have all these stories and then you can tie the stories into, like think about what I just spent the last five minutes telling you guys. It has nothing to do with public speaking, but it has everything to do with public speaking. Because now my level of embarrassment is way lower, I'm less stage fright, I have more things to make you laugh about, which makes you feel more relaxed, which makes you want to learn more. It's all related. Think in stories. Uh, question, I saw a few hands. Yes, sir. So you mentioned watching stand-up before public speaking. Yes. Who is your favorite? Louis C.K. is my favorite. He's so funny. Uh, I have a new favorite comedian. Her name is Marina Franklin. She is a... Uh, She's an African American woman who was raised in the sub between the suburbs of Chicago and the south side of Chicago, which the suburbs is like really really rich white. The south side of Chicago is like really really dangerous African American. She's hilarious. Louis C.K. in fact was just in New York City at Madison Square Garden. Marina Franklin opened for him. She's hilarious. In fact, Marina Franklin, let's talk about experimentation. She, uh, I heard her on a podcast once, so I wrote her a message on Facebook, and I said, I think you're really funny, do you want to have dinner with me? <laughs> and she wrote me back, and she's like, yes, yeah, Sundays are usually good. She's like, thank you for the compliment, like, it's nice to meet you, Sundays are usually good, and it just so happened it was Sunday, and I was like, how about tonight? And she's like, okay. So we had dinner like a month ago, she's really, really funny. <laughs> really funny. Uh, so, Louis C.K., Maria Franklin... Jimmy Fallon, I love Jimmy. In fact, Jimmy Fallon, do you ever know who Jimmy Fallon is, right? Okay, so Jimmy Fallon has a show, and he does this thing called hashtags. Have you guys heard of this? Where he basically creates a topic. Actually, I watched this one today before I came here. He creates a topic, and people write in on Twitter about it. So, the one I watched today was a hashtag weird shit I do, I think it was, or weird things I do, really. <laughs> And this girl, this girl wrote in and she said, uh, hashtag weird things I do, sometimes when I'm in a sad mood, I get into the shower, turn the shower on, start to cry, and pretend like someone just broke up with me in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Hashtag weird shit I do. I just love stand-up comedy. Actually, I kind of like secretly want to be a comedian, so I don't know if you guys think I'm funny or not. Okay, so other questions? Yes? What are your signature stories? Signature stories. So uh, I, have, I have several, but it depends on the audience. The first one is I was a college football player in the U.S., believe it or not. I know I look very scary. But um, quarterback, uh, the one that throws. I know European soccer, football. But we throw. Well, <laughs> um, so I played college football, and then I actually suffered a series of really, really big concussions, which made me quit, which made me realize the power of my mind, because I was in a very dangerous place mentally. I couldn't see colors. Everything was green. Everything was like the color of your shirt. Uh, I couldn't communicate sentences very well. I was sick. I was in a very, very bad place. And when I quit football, uh, the neurologist, the head doctor, told me that I was one concussion away from being totally brain dead for the rest of my life. So that story I used to sort of tell about the power of the mind and how important that is. Um, when I first started my business, so I've been doing this now for about five years, and when I first started my business, I moved to San Francisco. So I lived in New York City. I was working for Mike Bloomberg, who was the mayor of New York City, who was one of the richest men in the world. He was a great boss. I had a great job. I quit the job to move to California because I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Like, you know, everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. So I was like, okay, I'm going to move to California and become an entrepreneur. I moved to San Francisco, the number one most expensive city in the world, with like $8,000 in my bank account, which is not a lot of money for San Francisco. 
So I'm like, oh, sweet, but I'm an entrepreneur. Like, I get to hang out in my pajamas all day. I get to, like, take sun whenever I want. It's like California, you know. I can have a mimosa at noon if I want, whatever. But I had no idea what I was going to do. No idea. So I quickly was running out of money, like totally out of money. And one night I'm sitting at a bar, and I'm like depressed, drinking, right? Like that. And this girl comes up to me. And she's cute, right? And she starts, hey, what's your name? And I'm like, Brian. <laughs> yeah. She's like, well, like, what do you do? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> Just think about how I'm going to pay my rent, basically. I don't know, I'm kidding, I was a little bit more charming than that, but basically we started talking and then I think I got her phone number, I don't remember, I got her phone number, she leaves. Five minutes later, another girl comes up to me and she starts talking to me. What's your name? And I'm like, Yo, are you guys friends? Like, are you, are you testing me, you know? And uh, so we start talking. Five minutes later, this dude comes up to me and he's like this really nerdy, like, geek, you know? And he has like a backpack and he's like, dude. And I'm like, oh, what? You know? And he's like, I'm like, I'm just trying to like drink and be depressed. Like, why do people be talking to me? And he's like, uh, how do you do that? And I'm like, how do I do what? He's like, how are you so good at talking to girls? And in this moment of desperation, I said, well, that that's that's my job. <laughs> like, that's what I do. I help guys talk to girls. He's like, dude, can I hire you? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> He's like, how much? I'm like, $100 an hour. He's like, can we start tomorrow? I was like, I'm pretty busy tomorrow, but we can start next week. I'm like, I don't have shit to you tomorrow. I'm like, depressed, you know? That was my first company. I called myself a social liaison, and I hated it. It felt awful. I did it for two months, and I quit. But here's, here's the thing. So that's a signature story. My third signature story is what happened after. So, I quit, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm, I'm out of money, what am I going to do? Like, I was literally out of money, I think I had like $1,400 in the bank, and my rent was like $1,600. So I'm like, alright, this is not good, like, banking, you guys, finance guys, like, $1,400 in the bank, $1,600 in the, uh, in the rent means that you're fucked, right? So, I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? So, I start renting out my apartment. Airbnb, because I have a beautiful apartment, so I started calling my friends, and I'm like, hey, hey, like, can I come sleep on your couch? They're like, but you have an apartment, and I'm like, but I need to sleep on your couch, so they're like, okay, so I would rent out my apartment in San Francisco and go sleep on my friends' couches, and San Francisco's in Northern California, so San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego. One day, this guy comes over to my apartment, and he was going to rent it for two months, and he said to me, uh, so where are you, I have, my, I have my suitcase, and he's like, so where are you going? And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm going just down south. He's like, oh, cool, Los Angeles, San Diego, Mexico. I'm like, no, like, you see that house right there? That's, like, that's I'm right there, that's where I'm going. He's like, but that's like two blocks away, what I'm like, I'm an entrepreneur, you know? <laughs> so those are some signature stories that I use when I talk to students because everyone has this, I call it entrepreneurship porn. Like, everyone, like, I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to leave my job today and become an entrepreneur. Can I, can, should I do it? I'm like, definitely not. Definitely don't leave your job today. Wait until you're making enough money to live independently or making as much money as you're making your job and then leave. So I work it in, you know? I work it in. Um, those are a few of my signature stories. I bet you're glad you asked that, like, 20 minutes later. <laughs> and then, no, I'm kidding, that's the last one. All right, other questions? Yes? Speaking of brain that end negotiation. Yes. Uh, how you remember things that uh, come up on the go? Just, you cannot remember them in the course, so you have to do that. How do you do that? Good, good question. So, are you asking how I do it, personally? You remember things uh, to come up later with them. Yeah, so... I have worked really hard on my brain, and that sounds kind of funny, but it's true, because I literally, like, if I wanted to say good question, that's a great question, here's what it would be like. In my mind, I'd be like, that's a great question. It would be like three-second delay. It was so frustrating. 
and it was very scary. And so, um, what I do to keep my brain sharp is every single day I write down ten ideas. And if, it, again, if I, I keep saying, like, if you take nothing else from this talk, this is the most important thing. This is also the most important thing. So, like, knowing your customer's pain points and solving them is number one. Number two, I really think if you want to basically keep your brain sharp, it's a muscle, right? Like, Stephen King, who is the, one of the best writers ever, said he, 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 if he doesn't write every single day, it takes him two weeks to get back into writing flow. The brain is a muscle. If you don't walk for two weeks, your legs atrophy, right? So every day I write down 10 ideas. They could be for me, they could be for my friends, they could be for business people. And I've actually been able to make a lot of money for me and also for other people because I write down ideas, right? And so what could these ideas be about? Like today, the 10 ideas were 10 things that I could say in the presentation that would make the audience laugh. Tomorrow, maybe it'll be 10 ways that I can make my mom smile. The next day could be 10 business ideas that I could give to, to Ruben and Guyana to grow their business. Anything. Here's the most important thing. 99.9% .9 of your ideas will suck. They'll be awful. Almost every single one of my ideas is terrible. Terrible. But one idea is good. And if you can get one out of every 1,000 ideas to be a good idea, then you're going to be in good shape. If it's for you or if it's for somebody else. So that's what I do to keep my mind sharp. In terms of remembering things um, about, about other people, I write down notes. So if you and I talk about something, maybe tonight I'll go home and I'll, what's your name? Ivan. Ivan. Maybe I'll go home tonight and I'll say, Ivan had a question about remembering things. And it'll just be in my mind. And if I come across an article that makes me think of something in negotiations and remembering, I'll send it to you. But you don't need to think about remembering every single... The things that are important, you'll remember. And the things that aren't important, you won't remember. You only have limited capacity in the brain to remember things. Don't stress yourself out trying to remember everything. Does that make sense? Cool. Yes? How do you stay on message uh, while doing long speeches and uh, how do you keep track of time? I don't, obviously, because here we are, like, I'm way off message. No, um, I, I, have a sh I, have a, I have an outline. I mean, what, what part of the speech is learned by heart and what's improvised? At the beginning, I think 85 to 90% was learned by heart, and then I did 10% improvis improvisation. Now I'd say it's like 50-50. Because for me, the fun of this, like, if I stood up here and gave you the exact same speech as I give every single group, I travel so much that it's like culturally I have to think about fun things to say, right? That are going to like connect with people, like making jokes about my Russian language tonight, right? That was the first thing I said to you guys and you all laughed. Because you were like, oh, cool. Like he's identifying. Like for me, what I was trying to say to you was I appreciate it that you've invested in yourself to learn English. Because now we can have a conversation that we couldn't have had if, if you hadn't. Because I unfortunately don't speak Russian. So that's, that's what I was trying to say at the beginning, right? That was improvisation. I thought of that right when I walked in to make a joke about Russian. Half and half. But I'd say most of the time, for you guys, if you're not doing what I do, which is literally stand up in front of people and talk, if it's a job interview or a networking event, you can stay to a script, hit the major, major points, but find something that you can connect with. And then in terms of timing, I sort of just know from doing it, like, here's where I want to be at this time. Here's where. But practicing helps. Early on, I would rehearse speeches six, seven, eight, nine, ten times even in my apartment, looking at myself in the mirror. And the other thing about stage fright is, and, and just in general, because it was something that, that, we, that we talked about with you, Daniel, is that oftentimes we don't know the nervous tics that we're doing. Like, um, 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 like you probably didn't know that you were doing that. Videotape yourself talking. It's very important. Videotape yourself talking. Um, what I used to do all the time, which was crazy, I didn't realize it, but I would say the word like constantly. So he was like walking down the street and then like he told her that he should that she should be careful of the ice cream because it was like not that good today. And and I was watching and I was like, I think I said like like hundred and fifty times in the thirty minute speech, and that's bad. 
But I would have no idea. So videotape yourself talking. Very important. Even if you're preparing for an interview, just to see how you move and talk. And blah, blah, blah. Good. Other questions? Yes, we do have a translator. <laughs> what if I spoke fluent Russian and I was totally messing with you guys? Like, I understand everything. <laughs> well, so, this is something that's been bothering me for some time. You told me that you think It's not you, it's him. Oh, okay. Okay, so, you, well, you, you said you've been traveling in different countries and giving a talk and such. But um, do you think that this kind of style works um, in every... I mean, because, you know, like, if you look at, say, Japanese or Koreans, the way these leaders speak in front of people, they have their own style, and they don't talk like a bottle, for example. I mean... It's a, great, it's a great question, and I think that the parts that we cover tonight, generally, from, from my experience throughout Europe, throughout the Middle East, throughout South America, generally work, which is this. Find someone's problems, solve them, connect with them, build trust, show them how you're going to do it, show them why they should believe you, and then make a direct ask. Basically, if you think about what we did tonight, that's what we did. The rest of the stuff, culturally, I think it's a great point. You should be careful of. Um, but I think if you follow those general principles of what makes a public speech good, those are the principles that you will see uh, universally. Good question. Uh, yes? Uh, go here and over here. When you were 20 years old, were you shameless? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, like, in all the wrong ways. Like, I was drinking a lot of alcohol and, like, talking to as many girls as I could. Very bad, bad boy. Very bad. But that's why it's like so inspiring to see you guys here. Because uh, when I was 20, I wasn't investing at all in my professional development. Literally, at all. I was partying my face off. And I, I, I wish, I wish, if I could do that over again, I wish I would be sitting where you guys are sitting, learning the things that you're learning on a Monday night, instead of like drinking like $3 vodka and like trying to make out with girls. Honestly. I'm very honest. Good question. Yes? Um, how do you personally uh, connect to other professional speakers or just people who are quite aware of the different techniques that people use to connect with them? So, how, so you want to connect with them? Well, yeah. For example, I want to connect to you or just like uh, use those, well, sometimes the manipulative techniques that you're using to make the audience more comfortable. Yeah, so good question, and I forgot to put this up, but guys, I also wanted to, because I appreciate your time and you being here, I wanted to offer you something. I have a, a book on public speaking, excuse me, and I'm, I would like to send it to you for free. Uh, I have an ebook version that I'll send to, to you for free. If you want it, which is the first way of connecting, right, is reading about someone's work. The second way of connecting is a lot of people like me have mailing lists. And in, in my mailing list, I give out 95% of my stuff completely free. And you don't have to buy anything. You don't have to buy to be on the mailing list. So if you want my book or if you want to be on my free mailing list, shoot me an email. I'll write it here for you. So this is my email, it's connect, C-O-N-N-E-C-T, at brianrashid.com. So it's B-R-I-A-N-R-A-S-H-I-D.com. In the, if you don't mind, because I get tons and tons of emails, if you don't mind, in the subject line, just write free ebook or mailing list. One of those two things. And I'm happy to send you the ebook. It's a quick read. The, the title is Mastering Public Speaking in 60 Minutes. It's your hour, Mastering Public Speaking in 60 Minutes. It was designed, I wrote it so that people could read it in one hour. I know the world didn't. So shoot me an email. Uh, so that's what I would say. A lot of these people that you think are, are, are so out of reach are actually, they have mailing lists, they send out free. You know, for me, at the very beginning, I used to take every phone call, every meeting, and, and, and someone would say, like, I want to sit down with you and learn about your career. And unfortunately, the more I've sort of grown,
the less time I have for that. So what I'll do is I'll put it all into like a, a mailing list, for example, where I'll send you content for free. Um, and, and that's that's what I would say. So please do connect with me on, on email. Um, and email me that and I'll get you to the phone. Uh, the other thing I would say about your question is figure out a way to help the people that you want to meet or that you want to develop a relationship with. I used to do this thing where I would write really famous people emails and I would say, hey, um, for example, how many people watch Shark Tank? You ever watch? No, this must be an American thing. Um, who is someone famous that you guys like? Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Okay. So, if you wanted to meet Tony Robbins, I used to do something like, uh, I would write, let's say I wrote Tony Robbins an email. I would say, Tony, I love your work. I want to help you. How can I help you? Good strategy or bad strategy and why? What do you think? Except for the person right. Exactly right. I just made you do more work because now I have to sit down and think, what do I need help with? And who is this guy? <laughs> I know nothing about his skill set. I know nothing about that. I know nothing about... Now I have to research him, mm -hmm. see what he's good at, so that, it's a good intentioned approach, but it's the wrong approach. Instead, find something that you know for sure Tony Robbins needs. Find something that you know for sure you can give him and pitch him that. You'll get a response one time out of 100, but it's like the ideas. One idea out of 100, if it hits, you can become a millionaire. A millionaire. Seriously. It happens all the time. Uh, so that, I wanted to mention that to you as well, about connecting with people that you want to connect. Other questions? Behind, the gentleman behind you? Uh, yeah. You said about podcasts. Uh, what are your favorite podcasts and why? My favorite what? I'm sorry? Podcasts. Oh, podcasts. Podcasts, yeah. I have a few favorite podcasts. I like the Tim Ferriss show. Have you guys ever heard of Tim Ferriss? He wrote the book, The 4-Hour Workweek, which is a great book if, you, if you're looking for a book recommendation. 4-Hour Workweek. Uh... I listen to his pod. I basically listen to two people's podcasts. I listen to Tim Ferriss, and I listen to a guy named James Altucher, who gets really, really interesting people on his on his podcast as well. And then there is another podcast I like. It's called Freakonomics Radio. Has anyone heard of Freakonomics Radio? It is unbelievable. I love it when people around the world have heard of things. That I, it's just technology is, is incredible. The idea of Freakonomics is. Um, it takes assumptions and it flips them on their head. So, for example, what do you think is more dangerous if you have a six-year-old child? Having a loaded gun under your bed? Swimming pool. Or, or having a swimming pool? <laughs> when, I, when I got that question, I said, oh my god, of course a loaded gun under the bed. It turns out your child is 1,000 times more likely to drown in a swimming pool then get shot from that loaded gun in your bed. The, the, the reason I like the book is that it, take, it tells you to take everything that you've ever been told is true and turn it upside down. And if you take nothing else from this talk tonight, number three, don't believe anything anyone says to you. Seriously. People told me at the beginning, you're crazy, you'll never make money as a speaker, there are so many speakers out there, You'll never, it'll, it's impossible. The road is forever. Don't listen to them. You'll never be able to write a book. Every single person in this room tonight, tomorrow, can start to write a book. Why? Amazon. You can self-publish on Amazon. There are no more gatekeepers. You want a radio station? Start a podcast. You want, a, you want your own TV station? Start a YouTube channel. Everything that existed 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago to keep everyone at bay... No, ABC said no to your TV show. Sorry, uh, the radio doesn't want you. Sorry, you can't, the publisher doesn't want your book. All right, fine. I'll self-publish. I'll start a YouTube channel and I'll start a podcast. There are no more gatekeepers. There are no more people telling you yes or no. You can do it on your own. That for me is really, really exciting. That for me is every single one of you can have a book about anything. And maybe if you don't think you have an interesting life, your book can be called 
my boring ass life. <laughs> and when people open it up, you shock them with what you did to go from a boring life to an exciting life. That's a book. That's a book. Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> I, see the, I see where the freaks in the room are. They're like, ha 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 ha. This guy. So I don't want to know what you're doing in this morning's pool. So, Fifty Shades of Grey was a self published book. Did anyone see the movie The Martian? With Tom Hanks? Or with, uh, with uh, Matt Damon? The guy that went to, the, to Mars? Uh, the moon, rather? He, that was a self-published blog. He literally wrote down uh, a, a, a few hundred words on a blog, and people were like, what happens next? What happens next? So he wrote a few more hundred words, and before he knew it, everyone was asking him, what happens next? And he had a book. The book became a New York Times bestseller. The book got picked up by a publisher, and then the book got turned into a Hollywood film. Right now, publishers, at least in the United States, will not sign you until you've self-published something so they can see how it did. They're using it as a vetting process. So the gatekeepers are totally, totally gone. What was your question? Podcast. <laughs> Podcast. See? I don't I don't I don't stay on train things. But that I would start with those three and then see what happens. Good. Other questions? Yes. What are your main tips for presenting a startup to investors? That is a three-hour training, <laughs> but, but I'll give you the short answer. Number one, know who you're talking to. Why does this investor care about you? Why does this investor care about what you are doing? Number two, show them the success of your team. The, the, the team, more than the product, is what, what they're investing in. Right? Number three, if you have traction, show them traction. And number four, show them that this is a huge market. Show them that the market is, 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 is ripe for growth. Those are the quick answers. Uh, yes? Uh, what about using gimmicks and performance in your presentation? Using gimmicks? And gimmicks and performance. I mean, how you move, how you uh, smile for them. Oh, how you move it. See, there's a lot of people that teach you when to smile and when to move and when to, what to wear. I, don't, I just don't believe any of that stuff. Because if all that stuff was true, I mean, you don't want to be like, hey guys, <laughs> thanks for coming tonight. I can't wait to teach you about public speaking. <laughs> you know? If you're like a weirdo. Uh, but, but in general, I think that the best public speakers are just like themselves. And just kind of chill. Like, I'm not really trying too hard to like make sure that all my movements are right. And, but videotape yourself, and if you're like walking, you know, I like to public speak. <laughs> Hello. I think public speaking is very important. Hello. You know, it's like just watch yourself. If you're like a normal human being, then you'll be fine. I, I, would, put, I would put more emphasis on the content and less emphasis on the delivery. Good question. Who else? Say it again. Negotiation. negotiation. Thank you so much. This is this is important, and I'll close with this. Um, oftentimes, I don't know how it is here in Russia, but in the United States, when you're applying for a job, um, the question that you will get if they're interested in hiring you is, "What is your salary requirement?" Do they ask you that here in Russia? Yes. yes. So. Usually what they want is a range. So like what is what would you accept as a range? Alright? What happens in if, if you if you give a number, you've basically cornered yourself into a box. So let's say I want to hire you, let's say I ask you for a range, let's say you say between fifty thousand dollars, I don't know what that is. In your currency, but like fifty thousand to seventy. Let's just use a fifty hundred thousand dollars. Let's say I want a hundred thousand dollars. All right. What you've done is you've basically just boxed yourself into a range. So, and I was telling the the group before, um, 
even if they'll never, ever offer you more than what you've said, ever. So even if they were going to offer you $110,000, and you're like, well, it was just $10,000. If you stay in that job for 10 years, that's all of a sudden $100,000. So instead, and in fact, I wrote, I write for a magazine called Forbes Magazine. Do you guys have heard of that? Yeah. I don't know. I never know. Like, and then I make that, and everyone's like, yeah, of course we're right. So I write for them once a week. I write about I, in their leadership column. And I wrote a post that said, why your future boss is trying to rob your money. And uh, that was, no, actually, I put that one on Facebook, because <laughs> Forbes wouldn't let me put it on their platform. <laughs> Gatekeepers are gone, though. I put it on Facebook. And a lot of people liked it. So um, instead, try this technique. So the boss says to you, uh, what is your salary range? You say, listen, you're the expert here. You know the company's budget way better than I do. Make me an offer, and if it's something that feels good to me, then we'll move forward. That right there is a, literally a $1 million piece of advice. And I don't even say, I'm not even joking about that. I've had people call me and say, Brian, I used that advice, and I got, some people got $150,000 more a year than they would have. They stayed in that job for eight years, $1 million. That technique made him $1 million. You know, I, I'm really excited about this opportunity. I, I think this is a great fit. You're the expert. You know your budget for the company way better than I do. Tell me what makes sense for you, and I'll see if it's a good fit for me, for what I'm looking for right now. Done. But, you know, uh, this is kind of popular, but if uh, the recruiter is not that easy, and, he's, and he still insists, like, well, but, you know, what are you hoping for, or what are you aiming for, something like this. You know, I, I, I also heard, like, you could joke about it, like, oh, like, and then all would be okay, but... No, if, 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 if he wouldn't stop on this. How many times would he have to say that to, 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 to me and he wouldn't stop? Maybe he's testing you. Maybe the second time he's going to say, I'm going to see how strong this guy actually is. No, tell me, I need a range. Do it again. <laughs> if he does it a third time, <laughs> Do it again. I don't know. No one's ever come. It's interesting. It's it, like a game, it, it, but, but but it's if you do it, and that actually, if anyone, if that's ever happened, has that ever happened to anyone? Where you've given, where you've, where you've not given a range, and they keep pushing. Yep. One person, two people, and what did you do? And, and then did he push again? Uh, yes. And did you give a range? No. And how did it end up? Uh, okay. Okay, so. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, the same. We will think. Okay. What about you? You gave, you gave in and you gave them a range. And did they give you a, a salary within that range? Yeah, of course. What if they ask how much will be enough to survive? To survive? <laughs> Then I would say I want to work in a place that's willing to invest more in me than what I need to survive. <laughs> and I walk my ass out the door. I'd say I don't want to work for you if all you're worried about is my survival. Minimum. Oh, so you, you're worried about my minimum. Again, I, and this is important, guys. And I know that the job market is tough right now. But look for people that want you to grow. Questions like what is the minimum amount that you'll take? doesn't make me feel very inspired. If you really want me, you'll come get me. If you really want me, you have 72 hours. Come get me. You have to be confident in your abilities. If they say minimum, just say, again, I don't know your range. I'm talking to a few different people, and hopefully you are actually talking to a few different people. I'm going to see what offers I get and what makes most sense for me. Make me an offer. It's on them. Here's the thing. Right now, it's easier than ever to create businesses, to create multiple sources of income. And this is the other talk that I give all over the world. No matter where you live, right now, 
you can make multiple sources of income, and the only thing that you need is a computer and your brain. And companies are starting to realize this. Companies are actually having a hard time finding good, young people like you to hire. They come to me, they say, Brian, I don't know what's going on, but these millennials, they don't want to work here. And I'm like, well, are you offering them minimum salaries? <laughs> are you letting them work in teams? Are you giving them creative independence? Are you allowing them to work remotely if they want? Are they in a cubicle? Are they in, right? All these things. But here's what companies know. Companies know that you, tomorrow, can start a company. You can literally start a company tomorrow. And you can probably make money in the next 12 to 18 to 24 months. So let them work a little bit for you as well. So we got to stop. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. All right, like, guys. Because we're, no, we're out. Of, we we got to get out of here. Yeah, no, 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 no. We have four hours of Sunday, and these guys won't be able to get Yeah, we got to go. We got to go. Can we do a selfie, guys? Sure. Can we do a big selfie? <laughs> yeah. But thank you so much, everyone, and please contact me. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. All right. Guys, come on, let's get a photo.